There's an old saying that a man with one watch always knows what time it is, but a man with two watches is never quite certain. This applies often in the world of robotics whenever we have multiple imperfect measurements, and we want to know how to combine these imperfect measurements to get an estimate of the true value. This process is called filtering the signals. Any sensor that you build or buy will give you a reading, but that reading is always approximate. For example, if you take a resistor and use your digital multimeter and it says, this resistor is 50.5 ohms, that doesn't mean that the resistor is really 50.5 ohms. Instead, it is saying that the measurement is close to 50.5 ohms, but there's always some uncertainty in that last digit. The real measurement could be 50.5 plus or minus some standard deviation. A normal distribution is a bell curve on either side of that measurement. 65% of the time, the true value is within one standard deviation of the mean. If the standard deviation is tight, then we say the sensor measurement is accurate. For resistor measurement, if you spend five times as much, you can get another digit of accuracy. Spend another five times more and you can get desktop digital multimeters that are more accurate. More money roughly translates to more accuracy, but that measurement is never exactly the true value. There is always some deviation, some uncertainty. In robotics, we often have a GPS sensor we want to combine with other sensors that measure the position location. A standard GPS measurement has a standard deviation of about 5 meters. Now, if we have a robot that's 1 meter across, but our GPS tells us where we are within 5 meters, that accuracy is not enough for many tasks. Instead, we can combine several measurements to improve the accuracy of the estimate. So what happens if we have two measurements that are different? Here we have one measurement of negative 3 and another measurement of 5. The true measurement is probably going to be somewhere in between these two measurements. One thing you can try is to average the measurements. Unfortunately, that's often not very accurate because the average measurement weights these two measurements exactly the same. However, if we know something about the standard deviation of the two sensors, we can improve our estimate. Maybe this orange measurement is very uncertain, while the blue measurement comes from an extremely accurate sensor. Then the true estimate should be much closer to the blue one than to the orange one. What we do is take the weighted average of the measurements based on their standard deviation. You can see if I make this standard deviation tiny, the combined measurement is going to be almost exactly on top of that measurement. If the other measurement was also similarly accurate, then the combined estimate is moved somewhere in between these two. A similar thing happens if we add additional measurements. Even if the additional measurement has low accuracy, you can see that as I add it, the combined measurement is moved slightly to the right. All the measurements have some impact on the combined estimate. I'll make that standard deviation smaller so you can see that a little bit easier. Notice that without it, the combined value is right in the middle. I can pull the combination over as I add additional measurements. The process can be done recursively according to Bayes' theorem. I take the output from combining two measurements and combine this with the third measurement. Then I can use this output and combine it with the fourth measurement. One cool result is that at each stage, the combined standard deviation gets smaller and smaller. As long as each sensor measurement is corrupted by an independent noise source, additional measurements give more information about the true value. This technique of combining uncertain estimates is at the heart of the famous Kalman filter. Follow the link in the description and play with this yourself.